Thanks. Hey, welcome back. <laughs> so we are getting ready for another camping trip after our last camping trip last weekend. Yeah, we were up at Keystone on Prue Creek. It was really nice. Definitely a learning experience. We, It's easier to figure out what we need after kind of going through the experience and then uh, adding the modifications afterwards. So <laughs> Brian hasn't had a chance to, uh, to do all the custom cabinetry yet since we've been out of town, but we're doing a little bit of modifications. We'll show you guys what it looks like inside. So we got all our sleeping gear up here, up by the bed, and we uh, Brian installed some cargo netting. So this is a great place to sort of stash things like your phone or a pair of slippers, some uh, soft storage, just in case, you know, you don't want to hit your head on anything uh, with any corners. So some soft storage, cargo nets. And this is where Brian left off with adding some wood panels. This is the kitchen area. Um, he's also gone ahead and add some basket storage on this side. What we found was that these seating areas got filled with our bags and our clothes and just um, all the food that we were bringing, everything was landing in the seating, uh, the seating area. So we're trying to add some upper storage to kind of alleviate that problem. So the next thing Brian's working on is securing our refrigerator. You're right. And it's just a temporary type of security. I got a couple D rings from Home Depot. They, they didn't have the flange that I wanted. Theirs was uh, required two bolts, and I needed a little uh, flange for one bolt, uh, so I I made one for each one. So all right. So the refrigerator will go here. All right. Now we'll put the the cooler in, and then I'll just put this big bungee over the top this is like super duty okay bungee like that. all right so that should keep it we're not going super any anything like super off road this weekend or the next so now eventually i'll put some tabs in here on here that rest up against it so it keeps it from rocking back and forth and then i can um, screw something on the top or even through here into the, the cooler to keep it from rocking mm -hmm. so. But this is a good temporary fix. Mm -hmm. What we might do is move this or redesign this whole contraption and take out the smaller unit and put it right over here where this basket is. So one thing I'd like to do is if we, if we can move that unit all the way over, then we can turn this into a potential bed. Mm. So, you know, I've got a friend that'd like to go skiing and um, so he could have a bed right here. Yeah, so I think it'd be easy enough to, to move that. We just have to extend the wiring, which shouldn't be any big deal. Just splice mm -hmm. them out, new wiring. And then you can and you can run the wires behind the this um, corner piece here that goes the whole length on that side. Okay. So you can hide it all. And then uh, we don't need another cushion. We just push that cushion to the side over mm -hmm. here. So we'll just move that basket yeah. um, on the bottom there. So When we build our additional cabinetry what i was I'm planning on doing is build two units that would attach together that are exactly the height of this so then you can take the top unit down put it on the ground and then you'd have your support for the bed and then um then you just have it get another uh, pad that goes from here to here mm -hmm. and then you got your mattress yeah so yeah, and functional too. You functional. See, you're using your cabinetry that you already have. Right. And it's easy to just pick it up and stick it up there, lock it in place. And so. mm -hmm. Yeah. What are some of the other things that we learned last weekend <laughs> from our camping trip? <laughs> uh, don't sit on the potty when it's up here because it's very tippy. <laughs> <laughs> so our, our potty is very portable. We can kind of put it anywhere. And since Vigo was on the ground, we had to put it up on the on the bench right. uh, so we might need to move the cushion to yeah. kind of make it more stable yeah, yeah. about fell over yeah. <laughs> so sleeping two people and a dog definitely affected humidity levels so we noticed uh, yeah, that 79 percent yeah it was um and it definitely depended on how many windows you have open so the first night we had every window open uh the humidity maybe up to 50 percent or something right. like that the second night, it was a little cooler, closed more windows, and the humidity went up to 76%. So 
Uh, definitely noticeable. So if it, you were in an, a situation where it was an extended humidity level, you might want to turn on your portable uh, dehumidifier. Right. So, or just open the windows more and suck up the cold. Yeah. <laughs> we got some fancy down sleeping bags. So. Yeah. Um, the other thing was um, paying attention to our battery packs. So unfortunately, when we set off, we didn't realize that our uh, primary battery pack wasn't fully charged. So that yeah. was... So the unit has to be on when you're charging. Mm -hmm. it, it acted like it was charging when I plugged it in because one of the lights came on and it kept flashing and I assumed it was charging and it was not. So mm -hmm. I actually have to turn it on to charge it. So Okay. But, and then our other battery pack, uh, for some reason, got it was looked like it was working well. It was slowly decreasing because we were using that primarily for the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And then we got down like 74%, somewhere around there. And then we woke up and it was completely dead. Yeah. So, so unfortunately, we did not bring our solar charger. Right. <laughs> that would have solved everything. Uh, but keeping an eye and getting familiar with how your battery packs run is probably really good advice because it's kind of our first time doing all of this together. Uh, so we did some test running with the, with the running the fridge and the battery pack in the house, and it seems to last about a full solid 48 hours uh, without before it needs a recharge. So the readout on the battery pack uh, seems to be a little inconsistent, but the full um, the amount of power that you get seems to be consistent about 48 hours before it needs more. Um, charge right so this time we'll bring a, a solar charger <laughs> yeah yeah so just in case so yeah the our very first trip last weekend was actually three days three nights so it's our longest trip first so we definitely uh had a steep learning curve trying to figure out all of the things that we need to know so now let's uh try getting the fridge in and then seeing uh how it's all gonna fit There's no handles on the side. Yeah. Makes it a lot harder, but it doesn't fit. Our RV fridge is from Set Power. It's their RV model. It's actually worked out really well for us. We were curious about how the size would do. Yeah, but it fits perfect right there. Yeah. So, and then here's the the bungee contraption. All right. Again, this is only temporary, so we're not going to be using that long term. So. So yeah, this worked out really well for us. It is a really great size to fit drinks and food. Easy to get into. Uh, when you lift it open, I'll show you guys what we got so far. So uh, just start getting packing a little bit. We got some fruit in here, some cherries and some fruit, but we had plenty of room for, we were putting leftovers in here from restaurants. We were putting drinks in here. We we're putting snacks in here and it worked out really well. It just uh, seems like the right size for our needs for sure. So right now, Brian's going to plug it into shore power before, so we don't drain the battery. Yeah, I actually have the, the bat, I have the shore power connection into the side of the camper, so we're actually using the battery. Oh, okay. So we'll just plug it in here. One thing that would be nice, I, this, I really like these angled connectors because then things aren't putting a lot of um, torque on the connector. Uh, in our situation, however, it'd be nice to have one that comes straight out because we're, it, it, uh, it only goes in one way. Mm. And so it has to come this way. And so there's just a little bit of a clearance issue. But one thing that we weren't really paying attention to when we were powering the refrigerator was some of the settings. Let me show you guys how you can optimize the settings to use less battery power. So this is the um, control panel on the side of the refrigerator and you can adjust your temperatures here. You can also reduce the uh, draw off the battery by changing the compressor speed. So using the minimum, if you want to quickly cool your refrigerator, 
Uh, you can use the maximum speed, and we actually did that inside off of the house before we moved the refrigerator inside. But if you want to keep it on minimum compressor speed while you're using it in your camping. Also, there's battery protection. So you can have it on high, medium, or low. And I believe if you have it on the high setting, you're going to protect your battery from drawing the power even more. So I would recommend using the high setting there. And then you could always increase your temperature for your refrigerator, right? So if you're, um, what a regular refrigerator is around 40 or less than 40 degrees. And uh, if you, if you drop, if you drop it a lot lower, you're probably going to be drawing more off the battery more frequently just to maintain that low temperature. So setting a higher temperature. If we want to get a head start before you take off on your trip, I definitely recommend pre-cooling your fridge before Absolutely. you get on the road. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Anyway, we'll try the new settings for the refrigerator on this trip and see if we can minimize the impact on the battery. Um, right, we don't have anything. We're just, at this point, trying to keep fruit cold and drinks cold. And as you can see, when you open it up, when it's connected to power, you've got the internal light there. So that's really nice. Really easy to clean. Take the baskets out and just wipe out the condensation. No tons of water to drain like you'd get with a regular cooler. The other thing that we found out when we were camping is that we use the surface of the fridge a lot where for prepping. So it would be nice to have like a little countertop right over that. Right. Um, so we'll have, we'll have a, a shelf completely covering this. It'll be hinged on the back. So if you needed to get in here, um, you can just lift the countertop up and then hinge up here to get inside. The other thing we're going to do is this is all going to be it's not going to stay this yucky plywood. It's going to have barn wood all across. So the barn wood will come all the way up to here. This, these three triangular panels will get barn wood as well. So to make a nice little cozy area, we'll have a shelf here. So if you've got some stuff here you need to get in the fridge, you can just throw those little items up on there and then you can lift it up. Or you can put them to the side on the shelf that's over here. So, um, so we definitely were using this area a lot. So getting this a little bit more functional is our goal. Um, if we can lift this up and then put a shelf right above here out of the way so we can put items on that, um, it's going to improve this area quite a bit. Absolutely. So. And uh, Vigo did really well. He, we put his little pet, um, mattress right there and he mm -hmm. slept all night. So. Yep. It's different for him. It's his first time camping, really, so he didn't really know what to expect. But it's been fun so far, and so each time we go camping, we're figuring out a few more things of how we want to set it up inside. Yeah, more counter space, definitely. Baskets here and there. Yep. Just to put stuff. So you're not constantly digging into Tupperwares, trying to pull out your stuff. I think putting the cabinets in will make a big difference because mm -hmm. we'll have permanent items in there. We don't have to take them from the house constantly to... That's a quick update from us in between trips, <laughs> trying right. to keep you guys updated on what's going on, but haven't had a whole lot of time to implement since we've been on the road, but right. we'll catch you guys next time. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Right. What?